Good day everyone! My name is Ignacio P. De Guzman III of BIPED2A and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the four essential components of any closed-loop control system and describe how each of the components might function for a child who is using a crayon to color a figure in a coloring book. Basically, closed-loop control system is a type of control that involves the use of feedback in the activity error detection and correction processes to maintain the desired state. This is used by people to control slow deliberate movements. The biggest thing to remember when it comes to a closed-loop control system is feedback. An activity like running one mile your body can use visual and sensory information, but the positioning of your body, legs, arms, and breathing can put yourself in a better position to either run faster or run more efficiently. The nervous system sends commands to the muscles to execute those movements. The muscles perform them until the body once again in the desired position. Feedback is information produced from various sensors as a consequence of moving. Basically, what you get back from is what you are doing. In this diagram, it shows all actions that must occur. First, we have that input that is going to be the stimulus that you hear or see makes us start to move. Then our executive determine the action necessary to maintain the desired goal. The effector is the component of control system that carries out the desired action. Feedback, on the other hand, is the information about the actual state of the system. And comparator or error detection mechanism compares expected feedback from the desired state to actual feedback from the present state and relate any difference to the executive. So, let me relate these components for a child who is using a crayon to color a figure in a coloring book. Now, let's say that there is something that suddenly enters the child's mind that he wants to color a figure in a coloring book. The executive, which is the brain of all the actions that are about to take place, will now determine the actions necessary to maintain the desired goal. Like, the child would want to determine how he will be able to color a figure, what different colors he will be using, and what strokes he will be doing. And he is picturing out in his mind what will be the figure look like after he colored it. Right after determining those actions, the effector will now execute those actions or decisions necessary so that the child be able to color a figure in a coloring book. These actions would be The child will get a crayon and a coloring book. Use appropriate color and do the right strokes to be able to finish the task. Now, after he did all the actions, the feedback will now send information to the child of what had happened after he colored a figure or the result of the actions that have taken place. And then, finally, the comparator will now compare the actual state or what had happened when the child finished coloring the figure to the desired state. Was the child able to achieve the desired state? Was he able to execute the actions necessary to maintain the desired goal? If not, the comparator is now responsible to relay any difference between the actual state and the desired state to the executive. And the process will be repeated all over again until the child is able to achieve the kind of results he wants to have, which is the desired state. So. That is how the four components of the closed-loop control system function in a child who is using a crayon
to color a figure in a coloring book. That would be all. Thank you for listening and God bless.